Hi everyone, today I'm here with Arian, again, fourth year medical student, soon to be doctor, who got a 258 mm -hmm. on the uh, step two CK. So I thought it'd be nice for him to share with us how he got that score. So Arian, I feel like step two is one of those tests that people usually take a couple of weeks on and a lot of it's based on how well you prepared during clinical rotations. Right. So could you maybe tell us how you studied during those clinical rotations generally and then we can move on to how you studied for step two directly. Right, okay. I think the challenging thing about step two is that the resources are a little less defined and there's a little bit more freedom and variability in terms of what your preceptors teach you and um, what kind of resources are out there. So it can definitely be a bit more, I found it to be more a bit more daunting than step one, which I found was just, you know, follow the very well trodden trail of how to study. For in my clinical rotations, I used UWorld for all of them, which is still a great resource. Um, and then I really liked the Case Files book. It's great because uh, during your downtime on rotations, if you're reading a book, you look like an all-star. If you're looking at your phone doing UWorld, you people are more suspicious of that. So having a physical book um, is great from that standpoint. Um, and I found the cases to, again, as I was saying kind of in step one, they're a bit broader than you probably need for the test. They cover everything, every little detail. It gives you that nice foundation, which then you kind of, you world is a little bit more high yield, and then you take the MBME, sh the shelf exam, um, you know, you're ready for it. That's personally all I had time for. I mean, you're working long days and reading case files and doing UWorld was about what I was able to do. Um, there's also online meta ed, um, which uh, you can watch to fill in kind of any gaps. And sort of, I guess, kind of seems like uh, Boards and Beyond but for step two. Mm -hmm. um, so that's primarily what I used in my clerkships. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was kind of your base case files and online meta ed, and then you filled in those blanks with other resources for each rotation? Mm -hmm. or is that pretty much what you stuck to? Oh, yeah, that's pretty much what I stuck to, that, mm -hmm. the, that and UWorld. So those mm -hmm. are the three, and then, you know, if a preceptor told me to go read something, or, mm -hmm. you know, there's maybe some, or we talked about something in um, didactics or something, mm -hmm. but, you know, you, you can incorporate that. Primarily, like, before each rotation, I made sure order the case files book, look at how many UWorld questions I had to do in that time, and how many online meta videos, and before each rotation say, okay, this is four weeks, this book's 60 pages, there's 60 UWorld questions, and there's, you know, like six videos I have to watch, that means I need to do this much per week, and mm -hmm. stick to that schedule. Um, and then, uh, towards the last week of the rotation, I would do the, um, the practice shelves. So usually there's one or two for each specialty, and um, there's actually a, a, a Facebook group where med students discuss um, some of the concepts that are tested there. So, so do you not use like um, Anki again, or like Firecracker, or Sketchy, or anything like that? Oh wow, kind of uh, left a big gap. But yeah, I I didn't use those for clerkship. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe a shout out to step one. I did use Sketchy. So okay. <laughs> sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, sketchy is a, is a good resource, I thought, mm -hmm. so especially the micro stuff. But I think, I think just because you're in third year doesn't mean, you know, say you're somewhere and someone, someone comes in and they've got some sort of infection with some bacteria, it's a great time to go back and like just watch that sketchy video one time or, um, you know, read something quickly about it on up to date, um, or heck even Wikipedia, you know, just. Um, kind of tying that all back in or, you know, they put someone on some new drug, make sure you remember the mechanism action, the side effects, etc., etc., some of the pharmacology. And when did you start studying for step 2 and then how long did you take for that and what was your general schedule? So for step 2, CK, um, rotations are still busy. I wasn't able to really start reviewing at all, you know, until dedicated. Um, I was lucky that internal medicine was one of my last rotations, so, uh, and that kind of makes up the bulk of step 2 CK. Some people won't have that schedule, so I took six weeks which again, I will repeat, I think it was too long. But, um, and I know a lot of people that took three or less, CK definitely gets less time. During that time, I basically went back and did all the UWorld questions. I ordered a book called Mastering the Boards, I believe. And then I also used the first aid CK book. So I made sure to read through Mastering the Boards in the CK book. Um, throughout those six weeks, I'd do the UWorld questions. And I think, you know, when you get to CK, there's just so much to know that it's important that, you know, you get a question wrong or feel like you don't know something. 
it's really, I think it's okay to take that time to go and delve a little deeper into that um, and make sure you do know that. You know, use any of the resources you use from step one. Go back and look at your case files book or whatever, mm-hmm. um, or watch an online meta video. So mm-hmm. um, definitely being able to identify your gaps in your, in your knowledge is, is useful and you kind of patch that hole. Definitely less of a, a, a structured format than for step one, I think. Mm-hmm. So it's more fluid and blanks, but you still use your old case files and online meta is kind of like, Pathoma, um, Pathoma slash like boards and first aid kind of. Yeah, I mean, case files was a bit longer, so it's it's harder to use during mm-hmm. dedicated. So that's why I ordered that. Um, I think it's okay. Master of the Boards yeah. book, because mm-hmm. um, it's probably only like two hundred pages, so you can really and it covers everything, mm-hmm. so you can cruise through that. And then the first aid book, and then um, you wrote those were the three things I used mm-hmm. for the actual dedicated, and then of course. You know, if you don't know something, you need more information. Mm-hmm. I went back to, you know, old resor- other resources. And then, um, yeah, during clerkships, I used the online meta and the case files with mm-hmm. UWorld. So by the time I had done taken CK, I had done UWorld twice. For step two, was there anything that you would have done differently um, besides maybe shortening your dedicated period? Maybe look for other resources for dedicated. I Maybe something that was a bit more like high yield. Mm-hmm. Um, both... Both the, the CK book and Mastering the Boards are still a little long. I don't know, maybe it's not my fault. It doesn't seem to be as good a consensus about what's going to be on CK mm-hmm. as uh, what's going to be on step one. Mm-hmm. So I think that's just hard, and I think everyone in the class is using different resources. I guess it's hard to say, but I guess I, I'd say I'd stick with my resources that I mm-hmm. use. So. 30 years is a long year, and just staying focused at the end mm-hmm. is hard, and so just mentally prepare yourself for that, and I think that's why the shortened time might have been a little better. And so for... Uh, CS, are there any tips you give for step two CS? Yeah, my classmate put together a little practice group. We met once a week, and there's the first aid CS study book, mm-hmm. and he would just print off the cases from that, and we would be the standardized patients, and we would just go through them. Um, and so by the time we took CS, I had acted out every case in that book, or close to. Mm-hmm. Um, I did miss some weeks, but it's hard because the last thing you want to do is show up and do that, but it made it so that I could just review that book for maybe five days or something before CS, and mm-hmm. uh, you know I was able to pass. So again, yeah, if you if there's classmates who put something like that together, people you can go practice with, you're really gonna want that because um, just reading the book yeah. is not you need that hands on. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just stuff in it like they're gonna make you do in CS that you might not feel super comfortable with, like talking to someone who was just sexually assaulted and. Mm-hmm. You know, we did that case, and um, it was very uncomfortable talking to my friend who was acting that, but at the end of the day, then when I had a patient in the CS, it was, you know, I, I kind of knew what to say to some degree. What yeah. book was that? There's a first aid book. So there's a first aid okay. book for CK and CS. Okay. Yeah, just get those probably, you know, before you take the tests. Mm-hmm. And you could even get the CK one earlier and use it kind of to study for clerkships mm-hmm. too if you wanted. And yeah, that's all I used for CS and uh, just practiced. Yeah. And took maybe probably wasn't even five days like four days just to read through the first aid book again and mm-hmm. um you know find one person and kind of go through stuff with them and the format I'm sure most of you guys know but a lot of it is just talking to the patient and being comfortable in that setting you know getting a complete history and then oftentimes the physical exam you don't really have enough time for it but just kind of knowing the key components of it that you want to do and then when you get out you have to write a brief note and you kind of have to come up with a differential and I think as med students, we're not great at differentials. So I guess one thing to do as you're going through the CS book would make sure that for every chief complaint, you almost have a copy kind of a template differential, which is great because if an old lady comes in with fatigue and you can't get much out of her on the history, or you just you waste your time doing something, you do a bad job, you don't even get that much information, you don't do a good physical exam, like and you just totally botch it, you can still come out and like you have that differential. And you just can order those tests mm-hmm. and still get points for that encounter. Mm-hmm. That would be something I would say is important. When did you take step two in fourth year? And uh, where was it relative to step two uh, CK and CS? I took step two CK right after um, I finished my last clerkship. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I took... Actually, sorry, that's a lot. I took CS right after. I, like, I finished mm-hmm. my clerkship, which was e- EM, which I think is a useful one to have. Because you see a lot of patients, so you're good at like H and P's. And then I studied for, I can't remember four or five days. Flew to Philadelphia where I was taking it, and then 
to CS, and then that Monday got back and started signing for CK. I just wanted to get CS out of the way, um, and I'm not actually very sure on dates when um, you need to have it done by. Mm -hmm. But if you could do it after sub eyes, if you have some time during interview season or something, or before that, um, that might not be a bad time to take it, because it definitely made my summer feel very cramped to mm -hmm. do all that together, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. So you only had like a week to prepare? Yeah, I only prepared for a week for CS. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I had done all that with my classmates, and then... Mm -hmm. Was that throughout the third year? Yeah, probably throughout the second half of third year. Okay. Um, and then, you know, coming right out of EM, I felt pretty fresh. Uh, doing a differential and seeing patients kind of fast. I really only felt I needed the four or five days. I don't know of any other resources. I just used the, the first aid CS book, and after I read through that, I said, okay, let's. Mm -hmm. And I think most people in my class took, like, a week would be tops just to mm -hmm. prepare for it. But Dr. Louis set up a practice session, and, you know, that's helpful, and they'll probably do it again, and they can kind of help you and say, you know, you're not ready for this or you're ready for this. Mm -hmm. So um, I would definitely suggest doing that. Mm -hmm. And I should definitely suggest practice, practicing with uh, your classmates. Well, thanks, uh, Arian, again, for doing this interview with us. If you have any questions for him about Step 2 CK or CS, leave them down below in the comment section, and I could uh, ask him and get back to you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for having me.